All right, today is the day and we're gonna be looking at building a fuel cell today. I was hoping to bring you the fuel cell from start to finish, but we're just gonna cover the welding up of the fuel cell itself and then we will jump into um, actually doing a urethane liner, putting in the foam cell inside and fixing our sender and fuel pump. All those things we'll just have to add into another video because I was delayed a few days with my son commandeering that room that we do all our welding in. So that kind of pushed me back, just finished up the welding before I could get this video posted to you. But I wanted to make sure we got it out there. It being Thursday, I'm here in the US. This is Thanksgiving, a day we use to celebrate and give thanks for the things in our lives. And in that, you might come and see this video on another day, but we're always thankful every day, aren't we? Um, but I just wanted to let you know I'm all very thankful for you in your coming to the channel and watching. Um, amazingly, we have gone in just over or just a little under, I guess, a month from just under a thousand subscribers to at the posting of this, we'll probably be hitting about 38,000. Again, thank you for your coming and watching the videos. Also, a big thanks to YouTube for having this platform. And we might not always agree with YouTube in maybe their decisions to demonetize people that want to discuss Area 51 or the Flat Earth or things that um, you think would be um, of no controversy, but whatever. But we do have a great gratitude for this platform and the internet in general and what it's done to connect us all together. Um, I use YouTube whenever I have problems that I need solved or at least go and find somebody that has some experience in something that they can make the problems be solved a little bit quicker, I should say. In fact, I uh, was gonna do some landscaping and create some big sculptured rocks and thought, well, let's jump into YouTube and see what's out there. And came across a gentleman who uses um, chunks of cement to build the base of his rocks. And I was like, wow, I just happen to have about two and a half tons of broken cement pieces I need to get rid of. What better way to use them and accelerate my new craft of uh, creating cultured stone for landscaping. And here's what that looked like, or at least in the process. Like I said, lots of things you can learn on YouTube. Some of you are here to learn from me. Um, I appreciate that. And it's all just a benefit to each of us as we learn to um, share our experience, accelerate things and make our civilization a little bit greater. Anyway, enough of my chit chat. Let's go see that fuel cell built. Now we have a bunch of uh, 1 8 inch sheets already pre-cut, ready to go. And I'm going to go through and pre-assemble the thing here now. And this is going to create about a 13 gallon fuel cell. And I've got a couple of features that are going to be included in this tank that make it very particular to this car. So I really couldn't find anything that was a uh, standard constructed by anybody else that was going to fit. But it's going to have some things, like I said, that will make it uh, very convenient. One of the things you'll see here is there is a deeper section in this tank, so it's going to have kind of a pre-built in sump that will keep the fuel collected and condensed right around the pickup of the fuel pump. Now it's also shaped this way because it's going to sit on the passenger side right above the side intake, the lower intake. And that sump is going to be dropped down alongside the subframe itself and then the bulk of the fuel sitting above the air intake. You'll see that as we fit it into the car in just a bit. I'm just going ahead now after we pre-tested this all thing and now start tack welding it all together. And you can start to see now the, the little tower as it looks now, but will be the sump in the end that sits down lower than the rest of the tank. And we're going to go around and uh, weld this thing all the way around all the corners and have to do the inside corners on the inside of the tank. But we have the convenience of this tank also having a full lid. The top of the tank will come off, which could make it convenient for servicing it, getting to the fuel pump, the pickup, and we will be adding some foam to this tank. Going to make it very easy to install that. Now, part of that system having a lid, we have to have this flange that has some bolt holes every two inches. So we're going to weld that flange on. And of course, welding all the seams. I won't make you sit through all of the seam welding in this thing. But then once we get this thing welded up, we will uh, take you on and start showing you some of the other features and little things that we are going to be adding to the tank. 
I said they have to go on the inside of the tank to weld that inside corner. Now I'm not going to go ahead and test this tank, you know, pressurize it and test it with fluid because it will be lined with a urethane liner. Although I believe all the welds will work. And in this video, I'm right here, I'm bending some tabs. And this is a system I'm going to use to keep stresses off of bolts attaching directly to the sheet metal of the tank. We don't want that because they will fatigue with vibration. So these little tabs will be actually welded to the tank. And off of the tab is a little carriage bolt that will come out and mount to the mounting points off of the subframe. There'll be two of these mounts directly to the subframe and then two to this little bracket that you're seeing that we're working on right now to come off the subframe and be uh, kind of perpendicular to the subframe but hold the south end of the tank. So we have these four mounts, two on this bracket, two against the subframe, and then it will also sit and mount against the, the air duct on that lower side of that passenger. So once I get all these brackets uh, attached, I'm gonna go in and take a little Sharpie and mark all four corners of it so that I can go in and uh, weld the brackets to the tank. Also marking the little metal brackets that were gonna be welded to the subframe. And those on the backside. And like I said, we'll take it in and just weld all these pieces on. Also welding a little drain hole. So a little aluminum bung, gonna weld that in place. Also another thing that you're always wondering why manufacturers don't put a drain on the fuel cells. Once we got that drain in place, we're gonna go ahead and put these brackets on that we've just seen um, marking. And tack welding this one in place. Um, I did not get video of welding all the brackets on, but this is what they look like in place. I said a little carriage bolt comes through there. That carriage bolt is loose, but we'll have rubber bushings holding it in place as well. Now here I'm also just turning down a piece of aluminum tubing to act as our filler spout. It'll slide right through nicely tight into a hole into the lid, weld it on the backside, and then I also have little grooves to uh, be able to securely fasten the rubber filler neck. Again, go around, weld this whole thing in place, and then we'll switch to one of the last things. We're gonna also put some interior bracing in this tank. Not so much to brace the tank as it is to hold the foam, the fuel foam to hold the sloshing to a minimum, but the bracing will hold that foam in place, keep it from moving with the fuel. And then to close this thing up, we will uh, show you how this foam fits in between these uh, spacers. And of course, when we get the whole tank lined, we will show you the putting the other components in, but the fuel just fits between all these spacers to keep them from moving. All right, there you go. We have the fuel cell. Like I said, we'll finish that thing up and then be able to start putting some things together back there. We're all looking forward to the day of being able to start this thing up and see how it runs, how it sounds, and how the components are gonna start working in all those new engine setups. But anyway, thanks for stopping by today. Hope you have a great day, no matter where you are, and come back and see us again. All right, are you still here? That means you are a diehard fan of the channel, watched all the way through to the end. In fact, some of those diehard subscribers to the channel have been asking if we have any kind of merchandise, swag, or whatever you want to call it. And so I approached my son-in-law, who's been helping me a little bit on the social media side of this channel, and said, hey, since you used to operate a screen printing business, are you interested in doing this? And he said, no. Well, what he meant to say really was that it would be a lot easier to just use Teespring, that company that YouTube has gotten association with, and set up a store through them. So we have done that. You can jump down below this video and connect to Teespring and that merchandise that supports the channel here. Um, we appreciate it. If you are one of those fans that likes this kind of thing or just wanna support us here on the Builder Creator channel, um, like I said, jump down, go into Teespring and see what we have offered there. Anyway, thanks again. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. This is the end, really the end.